Hey guys, welcome back to Ag with Emma. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. I'm a grain cart driver for a custom harvest operation. Well, I was a grain cart driver. Now I am doing farm tours to share more about agriculture with y'all, but custom harvest is over. I believe today is the 5th or 6th of November and I'm just throwing these videos together because the end of harvest wasn't really busy, but I was trying to enjoy the moment and be there. So uh, today's video is going to be about what we did in Kansas, our first stop in Kansas. We had to switch the combine over with the concaves and some other things to make sure we were ready to go in corn and milo. And then um, just some other learning, learning experiences that I was able to have while we were there. So hope you enjoy and I'll catch you at the end. I did already show you guys how we switched concaves on the other combine. Um, and then I just figured I'd show you some different angles and different areas of what switching the concaves looks like. So in here is where the concaves are, those big round bars in there. And we have to take out the pins and collars on this side and then on the other side is where you put the bolts in. So I was cleaning that off so it didn't get super dusty when I took them out. And then you take that screwdriver, you can't even see where I'm trying to push it, but there's a pin right there that you gotta pull out and it's kinda hard to do it without a flathead. So we use a screwdriver to do that, pull that piece out, and then the rest of it is able to come out after that's out. There's three of those, one for each concave. I put mine on the tire so I don't lose them or in my pocket. And then I also use the screwdriver to kind of pry that up just a little bit. Sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're not. And then I just gave up on filming that because it was too hard to do with one hand. But after you take the pin and then the collar out, then there is, well, I guess that is the collar. I always called it the neck. You take that piece out. That's what it looks like from that angle. And then that's what it looks like when everything is out of it. And then those concaves are able to slide out off of that round bar through the other side. And then I decided to take this little opportunity because a lot of people have left comments saying they don't know what stuff looks like on the combine and I didn't either. So that's inside the feeder house. I believe that's called the feeder house chain or the feeder house chain might be on the outside. Um, either way, that's in the feeder house. Those are for the header. That's where the header rests on when you pick it up. There is all the belts. There's some more wiring. That's just, you know, getting up close and personal with the combine. And then they already took a concave out. So that's the, what the space looks like from the other side. They pulled it out of there. So when we hook up to the headers, we use a header trailer to move them most of the time, unless we can move fields without the header trailer. And then that little piece that goes up into that part of the header hooks on so it doesn't fall off. And then we also hook up the PTO, the drive shaft, and some hydraulic lines as well. So that all keeps the header on the combine while we're combining. And then after we switched concaves and put the headers on, we fueled up. They went to the field to do a test cut and then we those what that's what the new concaves look like so they have more spaces in them and the wires are smaller and that's what corn and milo needs to, so we can switch in between milo and corn and not just do corn and just do milo so they're putting those ones in then i walked all the way over here to see what that side looked like so up there they're gonna put that one in and they're gonna push it to the end instead of putting it in the middle the last one will go in the middle and then that thing that's spinning is the rubber so we try to not hit that or mess it up and they just sit on that round bar right there where the pins and collars go back on all right we got concaves in going to the field right now we just got here um today we brought campers down today and we brought equipment down yesterday so we had to make two trips because we don't have enough drivers so let's get whipping i think we're cutting milo today so that'll be exciting and we're cutting milo it doesn't look like a lot um because it's not the crop this year is really droughted out it's really short it does not look like milo should like you can barely tell there's any heads in this field normally I, I'm assuming, I've never been in a field of Milo, but normally I'm assuming it would be a lot of red and not looking like this, so, yikes. So with Milo, you cut it with a draper head. There's also a converted corn head called an arrowhead that was invented in Kansas by a farmer, but we use draper heads. I did have a couple friends that cut Milo with the converted corn heads this year, but 
We use draper heads. We also put Milo fingers or crop savers on the headers, but I'll show you guys that in a little bit. And then you can see one tiny little Milo seed on my hood. Oh, there's two, but they're small. And if the corn had ears on it in Kansas, that's what they looked like, so yay. It's just a lovely experience. It, it really sucked, but at least there was a little bit. Well, this doesn't look like a grain cart. removal up in here. I haven't really recorded anything since we got to Kansas, but I figured that would be a perfect moment since my hair looks as bad as it does. And uh, Hayden's down there watching Larson Farms, so we're fueling. This is the first time we fueled since we got to Kansas. First time we filled the grain cart, because we filled up before we left Nebraska, but the corn is so bad that I literally don't know what to record. I'll record something today. So we are in the last patch of corn that we'll be doing for 2022 i believe unless we find another job after we're done with milo but this is just crazy kansas has been it hasn't even been worth recording like i know that you guys want to see all the good the bad and the ugly but i've just lost all motivation to record things so i'm sorry i wasn't better about that but i did not have a lot from kansas um i it's been 20 bushel corn. For example, that is a uncut field of corn. You can see some of the ears. Sorry, we're driving by it right now, but that's what most of the corn looks like down here. So, pretty bad. Not good. Um, there's fields that we haven't even cut all the way. We'll cut a strip through it. There's no more ears anywhere else and then we leave it. Um, so this is about 100 bushel corn in here. You can see it's doing a lot better. Um, so that's good to end off on, I guess, but it's just, it takes it out of you watching bad crops and then, you know, you get to the tail end of harvest and you're just kind of, ugh. we've been doing this since May and it's been a very good experience, but definitely getting tired, so. It's kind of weird to like follow combines again, but I'm not really following them like I would a 200 bushel wheat in Nebraska. I mean, 200 bushel corn in Nebraska, but you know, I'm not just sitting. There was a field we did yesterday, 60 acres. And we got a load and a half off of it, not even a half of a load. Well, what do you think of it? So you can kind of see how low the ears are on this. And we've got a weed problem in this field. It was flood irrigated, but those ears, are just so low to the ground, but it's, I guess, what we got to do. how a corn head works this is the corn head and these match up with the rows so every space matches up with one corn row so here will be a row of corn here will be a row of corn here will be a row of corn and the corn if my arm is the corn stalk we'll zoom out for you it's going to go right in here and these are the deck plates and they're going to squish together depending on the size of your corn stalk and you can adjust that in the cab and then these right here are stock rollers and those are gonna spin really fast and kind of like suck that corn stalk down. And then the ears are gonna fall 
onto these deck plates and the chains. I don't know what those are called. These are always moving towards the auger, so they're like spinning that way. Then the ears get shoved into that auger right there, and that auger spins towards the feeder house. And then you have corn go into your machine, your combine. That opening is where it goes into the combine right there. Um, so I might be missing a couple pieces, but that's the gist. So if this, if my thumb is the ear, it's gonna go floop, and then those things are gonna catch it, and they're gonna start spinning really fast, and that's gonna go floop, and then boop, and then the ear is gonna go boop, and then <laughs> it's gonna go boop. So that's how corn head works. That's the gist anyway. And that is what they look like when this thing comes up. Deck plates, stock rollers under it, chains. So after we got done with corn, we switched over to Milo. We put these Milo fingers or crop savers on the draper head because the Milo is so short and the heads were small, so the Milo was falling on the ground. First, we had to set these screws in these little plastic pieces. I forgot what they're called, but we had to tap the screws in there. And then we had to go back and tap them in more because we weren't hitting them hard enough, but they would pop out so you'd hit one screw and then the other screw would pop out even if they were set in there pretty good so it was kind of a long process i think there was like 400 bolts screws whatever and that's what that looks like put on and then we're gonna put those plastic pieces on those so there's long areas long sections and so short sections that we had to put those on and we did it to bolt headers and then that's what it looked like after we put everything on. So now it is good to go. Added some length to that header. And then we had to do more. We forgot there was another box in the pickup. And everyone was tired of doing it. There was so many of them. Lots of them. Everywhere. And they're going to go right on that. You should have Perfect. <laughs> Those headers are ready to go we can get whipping in some milo and not have as much crop loss hopefully and it did end up working pretty good and that is all i've got for y'all today thanks so much for watching and for being here remember if you like this video to subscribe make sure you can catch all my other content and the next video i believe i'm gonna skip i have more custom harvest videos but I got the unique opportunity a couple days ago, since harvest has been over, to go and see the next at harvester. So that will be in my next video. I'm going to skip ahead of the line because everyone's pretty antsy to watch that. And I don't blame them because it's an incredible machine. So um, right after that video, I will jump back into finishing up the harvest content. And then I have got a amazing opportunity coming up in about two weeks. And I cannot wait to share it with you guys. It is going to be so awesome. So make sure you don't miss any of the adventure because my life is always one. And hit the subscribe button. Leave any comments, questions in the comments. And, and again, thanks for watching. As always, hasta la pasta.